Thank you, brother. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Good evening, friends. I just got in a while ago, and I thought I could come down and wish you all a Merry Christmas. And um, so it, I didn't know I'd had this grand privilege to talk to you on the Word of the Lord. Yeah, and um, so Brother Neville asked me, and I had several little Christmas texts that I've been using, one of them up at, uh, at Phoenix and down at Tucson, different places around there, a regular Christmas message. And I thought tonight i will just speak on a little something here that the Lord put up on my mind recently as I was up in Colorado and I was thinking on something at Christmas time and I got about five or six of the little jots wrote down here scriptures and things that I don't I guess Brother Neville and all ministers do that you yeah. seem like something comes to you and you jot it down you wait a while and you put it down I put it on a tablet of paper just on a tablet of paper then when I call on sometime I look back to you here and say what was this now that I got a hold of them? that's the way when we call real quick you know used to be I when I was younger, I could just, my mind was so, I could just think this right now, and I didn't have to wait. I think 10 days ago, I was at a certain, certain place, that's the texture it is, and here it goes. You know, since I passed a few milestones, Amen. Brother Higginbottom, and crossed a few rivers, it, it just don't come that way no more. I'm getting a little far up the road. But as Brother Neville said a while ago, we're getting closer. Amen. Closer home. It's good to be back home. I, uh, coming back, why? Awful snowy, and as I heard of the accidents and things, so many of them on the road, and people being killed, and just think how many hundreds will lose their lives now between tonight and after New Year's. How many Americans will die? Uh, and um, you know, some of us might be right here tonight. Yes. And it just depends on now that our condition before God. It's a sad nation, as Brother said. Sadness everywhere, yes. and our. Flag has been hanging 30 days half mast, all because of sin and people who would not accept God's way of, uh, of things. Even if we can disagree with a person, if we can't yet do it in a brotherly way, and then uh, see if Christ is in the heart, then no matter how much you disagree with a man, you've still got love for him and respect. I disagree with many men, many times. But still, I've never seen one yet I disagree with that I ever thought of any more than put my arm around him and call him my brother and try to help him the best I could. I disagree with him because I think maybe that upon disagreeing that he, what he believes that I might not believe just like him, but uh, and so forth. But I might try to project my way to him as he projects his to me and get them together and comb out and see what we got. But uh, a disagreement like that, just far as it comes to. We should never get angry or want to hurt or destroy or anything. We should always be trying to build up. <clears throat> Got a cold spell going on here, haven't we? <clears throat> 72 when I left Tucson. <laughs> and uh, when the sun went down and got dark, it's still 69. So then I come back up here, I'm just a shiver and all up. <laughs> uh, all that snowy road and below zero and life and everything I get all used to it again it's so strange how you can get so climatized it's just a, a little way and since I left you I didn't have hardly a chance to get survived up I got a like a sinus in the, the weather in here and as I get older and I was born and raised in here but when you see when you're young you've got something you throw off but when you get older well you begin to find out that something isn't there and, it used to be you could just Amen. forget about it. You, there's something there that uh, they just won't throw off like it did when he was a kid. So I uh, find out that way that I uh, warm climate <laughs> for an old man <laughs> kind of helps a little bit. I remember coming down that Utica Pike up there as a kid, at seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen years old. No shoes on, tennis shoes, eight or ten below zero, and tennis shoes, the toes out of them. And not, not I ain't walking down like the street here, but busting the snow. There's no automobiles. Come down, it might be a wagon track once in a while. Come down that highway of a morning, little old coat on, no shirt, and it pinned up like this, no more than what I got on right now. Soaking wet to my knees, go right on in and pay no attention to it. So you hardly have a cold. But that was about 45 years ago. <laughs> so a whole lot of wheat, he's gone a lot of miles and built up on the speedometer, you know, so we just don't take it like we used to. I see Brother Katz raise his head up. You're too young to think them thoughts now. So, so. <laughs> Wait till you get up for Brother Neville now. And then 
and you'll, re- you'll think a lot of things here. <laughs> we can sound. Well, we've had great times in the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord has blessed us tremendously. And I'm so thankful. And I come back, I think, next Sunday, the Lord willing, I want, if Brother Neville doesn't care, Amen. Uh, I've got a service at least Sunday morning, and maybe Sunday night, a healing service for Sunday night. Amen. Sunday morning, I've got an important message that the Lord be willing for me to deliver. I haven't thought up my text, uh, no more than just my text yet, no context to it. Because... I, I am not without any, without any, you know, revelation from the Lord, but just in myself, uh, I want to express something Sunday that I hope will kind of help out a little bit along these ways. Uh, I've got to go down into the field, and I've got just every day almost taken up everywhere. I think Billy was telling me in one of the itinerary that I got two or three days that I could come home in April after I leave here. Go back to Tucson, that about settles it then. And then on till next November, October, when I get back to this side again from overseas. Now, two more days to Christmas. One more day, isn't it? Might be two, Monday, two. It's Tuesday's Christmas Eve. Tuesday's Christmas Eve. Is it awful to see that this great holiday that we're approaching is approached in the manner that it's approached in? Yeah. It's such a pitiful thing, such a, uh, a rational thing, to think that, that rabbits and a, a myth called Chris Crinkle, Santa Claus and everything, has taken the real value away from what Christmas is. Now, we don't, we, uh, we don't know, and I certainly do not believe, I was just coming down, my wife back there and I, coming down the road, was listening to an astronomer that now they just fell on the idea which an astronomer told me many, many years ago when I was just a game warden here in Indiana. When they told me that um, uh, how those stars came together, just like that first astronomer did in that farm, what they say would be a natural thing that happens ever, I think they said tonight, 800 years or something like that, and it reforms itself again of Sardis and Jupiter and I forget, Mark. Myers, or I know how that's wrong. It's some of the stars, how they speed when they cross their orbits in line of the earth. And this astronomer tonight was trying to tell that it actually was a natural thing. I, I, don't, I don't accept that. I believe it was a supernatural Amen. thing that God, yeah. the, the things is supernatural with God. He is supernatural. Yeah. And, um, and I look down and know that this is facing back now to April. I'm going, Lord, willing for me to live that long, I'll be 55 years old. See, and I, I know the, uh, but looking back on my life, and I wonder where it happened from that first little Christmas is when we'd hang up her stockings, and Mama would get, we'd probably get an orange and, and two or three little pieces of striped candy, and that was a great Christmas to us. But, you know, the kids, they, they look forward for them gifts. We, we find out that at Christmas is to the, is mainly children. They, they look forward to that nowadays. It, it's turned off to the children, but it really should be adults. Amen. It should be a teaching their children what real Christmas is. And I totally do not believe that, that Christ could be born on the 25th day of December in Judea because it's colder than it is out here now. See? Uh, and how could the shepherds be keeping their flocks by night and, and then the taxation and everything and Mary had to come that far from way down in Bethlehem up into Judea, up into uh, Jerusalem and other... At, um, for the taxation, I, I, I hardly could could uh, could believe that or, or come up. Uh, I believe she come to Nazareth, and um, so um, when how that that could be done, it could not be uh, be done. But uh, I believe that Christ was born in the spring because in every way he was a lamb. See, you notice he was born in a barn and not a house. And when they took him to the cross, the others, uh, as far as we know, they. Never said about him leading them, but they led him. Did you know a lamb or sheep has to be led to the slaughter? It it will not go to the slaughter. You you have to lead it there. And usually it's a goat that leads the sheep. And and, in the killing pens, they have a goat. And the goat will walk up this runway to get up to get the sheep started down the runway to be killed. And the goat will jump out. But when they come a time to go kill the goat, he really kicks up a (laughs) bus. And he has to go in. Of course, you couldn't blame him. But... but, uh, it's a, a thing how a sheep has to be led, and he was led to the slaughter. They led him. He was a lamb. 
And I believe in that way being all together nature and lambs are born in March, April and well, somewhere along in there, not later than May. And I don't believe it was anything before March and anything after May, sometime along in there. But when uh, uh, the church, Christianity, was married into Romanism, was at the, the Nicaea Council, when they accepted the Roman uh, 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 nation, accepted the Christianity and made what they call the universal religion, was Christianity. They made the universal religion and they worshipped idols and they had a sun god. And right now, from the, from the 21st to the 25th, the sun almost stands in the same track as, as it's passing. In, what did you call that? Uh, you know, I thought I knew it, but I can't think of it. When the sun, is, it, it gains so much time and loses so much time until the 21st, between 21st and 25th of December, I forget what they call it. What? No. No. The eclipse is when it passes the sun and moon passes together. It's a, something in there. Oh, I, I, I you can almost see it, but can't right now. However, it's that standstill of the sun, which is called by the Romans. That's when the circus went on. It was called the sun god's birthday. They celebrated it from the 21st to the 25th of December. So then, being that this was converted, Rome into uh, Christianity was accepted in their way in Rome then they said we'll make the same celebration and pay son of God's birthday see the son God Jupiter's birthday then son of God's birthday 25th of December and that's but what difference does it make see today when we are even if it's a, if it's doing it in July or August or whenever it might be it's still the sacredness of remembering that God gave us the hope that we have in us. Amen. 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 That's right. And now, you say, well, the rest of them's all Santa Claus and going on like this. Well, we just might as well do it. No, sir. No, this is not a pagan celebration to us. Amen. This is a sacred hour. Amen. If there had been no Christmas, there would have been no resurrection. If there had been no Christmas, there had been no love, there had been no peace, there had been no hereafter. Uh, for the, uh, a believer if there had been no Christmas. Yeah. And now you say, well, if the rest of the world, they just, well, see, the forked lightning and the black cloudy sky show that there can be light in the time of darkness. Yeah, These lights tonight prove that. That there can be light in the time of darkness. And when does light shine its best? In darkness. Yeah, man. You turn these lights on daytime, sun shining in, you hardly notice they're on. But just one little wee light will shine real bright in a time of darkness. And right now is a darkness when every Christian should give a testimony of the hope that's in him. Hey, man, Jesus man. Christ, the Son of God. Not some Chris Crinkle uh, that uh, uh, was born back out there on some kind of a tree lit up and went out through a forest one night. Some fiction story. There's no bottom to it. But... We believe solidly on the promised word of God of a coming Messiah, and he was born on Christmas Day 20 or 2,000 years ago, we believe. So tonight we're going to speak a little bit on a different way. I guess your pastor's already spoken and probably speak Wednesday night again because uh, I, I know he laid back some text or something that gave me this platform tonight, and I want him to bring it. I want to listen to him. But just before now we do this, let's just bow our heads again for a moment of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, this great sacred moment, when we think of the different things in the Scripture here, that uh, everywhere we go back in the Old Testament speaks of that day when God shall send His Son. How those prophets back there allotted their time for prophecy of the Word of God to come to them. And they prophesied in their days and foretold the things that would come to pass and we see it all met there in Bethlehem that night when God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We thank thee for this. And now, Lord, tonight as we settle down here to, to speak on thy word and it's so sacred, Lord, that's the reason we like to speak to you first. And we ask that you will open our understanding to thy word. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I want to read some scripture here, just a regular Christmas story for the scripture found in, in uh, Matthew, the second chapter. 
And while you're turning that, John 3, 16. And uh, the other night up at uh, Phoenix, if you tape people here, listen to the tapes, uh, like for you to listen to that one, why Jesus had to come to Bethlehem. Why did he have to do it? And those symbols there of David laying and, and wait up on the mountain looking down and seeing the Philistine army garrisoned. And I compared that with exactly today and find out that Bethlehem, what it means, and Christ is our Bethlehem and can prove that every man that's born of God is born in Bethlehem. Because Christ is Bethlehem. That's what he was, the bread of life. And Beth, B-E-T-H, means means house. El is God. And E-L-H-A-M is Elham, which means uh, bread. And house of God's bread. And Jesus Christ was the house of God's bread. Bread of eternal life. And every man that's born into Christ, you're born into Bethlehem, God's house of bread. And how did the Leagues of these churches today is garrisoned like Philistines to keep the people from. And how that those gallant men, knowing that David was anointed and was going to come king someday, very unpopular then because he was a fugitive among his people. But one day his call come, they had gallant men with him. And remember, those men were Gentiles. Most every one of them were Gentiles. A very beautiful type of today. And one man was so gallant, he killed 800 men with, one, with his spirit himself in one day. Another one was standing in the field a little, and an army come up, a troop, and all of them run, and he stood there and slew man until his arms was tired. And then another one, how he jumped into a pit and killed a lion on a snowy day, single-handed. And a police, or an Egyptian run at him with a long spear, and he took a stick and knocked this spear out of his hand, took a spear and killed the Egyptian himself, and killed 300 captains. And, you're a great man. David crying out, if I could drink once more, see, from that well where he used to water his sheep when he went out of a morning from the corral, they want a drink of water. And these men pulled their swords and fought through 15 miles of man. Brought this water back and David said, far be that I drink it. And he poured it up on the ground as a drink offering to the Lord. What a beautiful type of the same thing. Uh, this John 3.16 tonight. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And what did Christ do? The life that He had to live eternally, He poured it up on the ground from His veins, His natural life, up on the ground as a sin offering for us. And how the Gentiles today, man of honor, man, great man, taking the sword and standing there and cutting their way through to get a fresh drink of water for Christ. Our David, which is very unpopular today, Amen. but our David, which we know is coming in power, Amen. go to tramp every nation under his feet like that and root him with a rod of iron, and real gallant man standing with the word of God and chopping from side to side fearlessly because we know he's coming in power. Amen. 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 Let's read now. After John 3, 16, let's read the visit of, of the Magi's of uh, St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now, when Jesus is born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them, where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, Of Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art thou not the least among the princes of Judah? Out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Herod, when he had privately called the wise man, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw 
the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And they had opened their treasures. They presented to him gifts, gold, of frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not depart, they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Very strange here how that God, in a lesser way, God does speak to people through dreams, I believe in. But how that God, in this case, used a secondary. Now, a dream is a dream, if it's interpreted rightly, it is a same as a vision. If it's a dream and being interpreted, God's used it since way back in the Old Testament and down through the ages and promised in the last days to use it again. Now, people can overeat and, and so forth and get nightmares. and It's not, it's not a real spiritual dreams that don't ring up when, it, when you read it. And some of it might seem right, but yet there's real spiritual dreams. And we know here at the tabernacle that God gives people dreams and they are interpreted and they come to pass and they're real. But it's a secondary way of doing it. See? Now, the reason it was done then, it was because there was no prophet in the land at that time to interpret the dreams. See? There was no prophet to interpret the dreams like Joseph and, and Daniel and those prophets of old. They had, had a prophet for 400 years. And God used a dream to, for the welfare of his own child. He did. He told Joseph when he was a just man, not willingly to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. No doubt she told him the visit of Gabriel and so forth and what he had said. But when he saw her to be mother, it was too unusual. You know, it just, it was something very different. And you know, that's what's the matter today. God does things unusual and it's so unusual till even just man can't see it. Amen. Joseph couldn't understand it. It was too unusual. Yeah. He was a good man. Nothing wrong with him. He was a good man, a just man, but it was so unusual. See, Joseph probably 40 years old or 45, something like that, they claim, when he and Mary was engaged. But here we find something that never had happened. A woman espoused this man and yet be found to be mother. And it was so unusual, Joseph was minded to put her away, but right at that crucial moment, God sent his angel and appeared to him in a dream. And said, Don't fear to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. What a newborn faith Joseph must have had when he rose up in there. Yeah. See, he never had needed any interpretation. The dream wasn't symbols. It was right straight out. Don't fear to take Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. There was no prophet to give the interpretation. So it had to come directly right straight like that to God, from God, to Joseph. Now, and God taking that secondarily away. What does it teach us right here before we hit our text? Here's what it teaches us. That God can use every faculty of our being if it's committed, surrendered to Him. Amen. He can use our mind, our dreams, our subconscious, our first conscious, our tongue, our songs, our eyes, our everything that we have can be used of God if it's committed to God. See? Amen. Everything that you are committed to God. He'll use every outlet and every part of you. He'll use it. No matter what it is, he'll use it if it's sanctified to his purpose and call. Now, tonight we're going to speak on gifts. And I want to title this. If I wrote, jotted something down in there with Brother Neil John. God's um, gifts are always, fi God's gifts always find their places. God's gifts is always rejected, but it really finds its place. When, now, What's the gift that these wise men bought, uh, brought to him? Today we find that we're swapping gifts. Everybody has to get a gift and try to figure out what the next fellow is going to give him so he can give him something comparing that much. And if it isn't, well, on New Year's, he feels he has to make it up. And each one studying and worrying and walking the floor, the millionaires, how they're going to get by to give so much to this one and that. When it's, it's all together wrong. It's, it's, it's all together. Christmas, here's there's only one gift that you can give. And that is yourself. Amen. Give yourself to God because God's already given to you His gift. Amen. Now, there's only one thing you owe back to God. That's yourself to Him. Amen. Now, and 
many times names uh, in the Bible. We don't notice it no more today. We, uh, you've often heard me uh, scar in this name of children calling, or people calling their children Ricky. Now, Ricky is a horrible name. See? And it's, uh, you mustn't uh, call them that. If you got a child named Ricky, for goodness sakes, change it something else. Uh, Ricky or, or Elvis or something like that. Ricky means a rat. See? And so you, you know, and, and what you call a person, that impresses that. Uh, a little lady the other day had a little boy out there called Ricky, and his name's uh, uh, Ricky, uh, James Ricky. And because it was so popular, Ricky, they called him Ricky. I said, change that name. I know some people sitting right here now. It's got a little grandson. And his uh, name is, uh, the one, one little boy is the sweetest, pleasant little fellow, and the other is Ricky. And that's what he is. You just watch him. His nature is just like that. And he just, I said to some of his grandparents or somewhere, I said, tell the mother, change the name of that boy. Just change that name over and watch what happens to the kid. See, if people don't want to believe that, we think we've lived too long for that. If there isn't something in a name, then why as long as Jacob was called Jacob, which means supplanter, deceiver, that's what he was. But when he wrestled with the Lord all night and the Lord changed his name, and about when he's about 60 years old, he changed his name from... From, uh, from Jacob to Israel, a prince before God, and that's what he was. Uh, Why was Abram called, had to be called Abraham before the baby could be born? Why was Sarah called Sarah before the baby could be born? Why was Paul, or called, or his name was Saul, but when he met Jesus, he changed him from Saul to Paul. When Simon was changed from Simon to Peter, which means little stone, and uh, all their names were changed is because what you are called is something about it. When you speak something, it identifies itself. I don't want to get in there because that's coming up next Sunday night, see? Uh, identification of a word. And, um, but now uh, we find these things so true. Now watch. God... What a strange thing it is tonight to see that those men, magis, learned men, great men, coming down from the east, that was Babylon, which is India, and they never come in any, uh, all night, started one night and got there the next, there's about two years getting there. They never come to a little baby in a manger, they come to a young child, a young child, and Herod killed the children from two years old. Um, uh, see, to know that it wasn't a little infant laying in a cradle. He just killed all infants. But he killed the young children. So he'd be sure to get him. Anywhere from two years old back. He set the time up because knowing he didn't want to kill too many, all of them, because they were more like slaves to him. He wanted to get, be sure to get it. So he said, the kid would be about two years old. So everything from two years old down, kill it. See? And that's brought to pass what the prophet said. And then... And a, a, a rhema there be heard a, ch a screaming or crying, a weeping, that Rachel weeping for her children, and they were not. Now, did you notice that these wise men, great man, was up in Babylon, and they saw his star. We said, we have saw his star in the east and are come to worship him. They come from the east where they saw the star going west because India is west, northwest. Of, ba of, uh, of Palestine and they come right down through the Tigris River crossed over the plains right on and come down into the Bethlehem where they found the, the, the baby remember Joseph and them never left there they went right down to Nazareth brought the child up right there now we uh, see here that they presented these men being astronomers and studying the stars and seeing these mysterious heavenly lights appear up there, that there was something going on, that they know that this Messiah, the, the ruler of heavens and earth, was to be born. And they come knowing that deity would be uh, enclosed and housed in a, a human being. Cause to show you their testimony. You know, you know, your life speaks so much louder than your words. So no matter what you say, people know what you are, but, but what you are. And uh, watch these people, these magi. They brought him, watch the gifts they brought him, identified what they thought he was. 
They brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And now watch what these symbols that I want to talk to you about now is what these symbols mean. Now I've got some scripture wrote out here that we'll read just in a moment on it, the Lord willing. Now, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now, gold in the Bible, uh, how fitting it fits to Christ because gold speaks of deity. Amen. Gold is deity. We'll get to it just in a moment. Frankincense speaks of service. And myrrh is death. God's deity in service to die. And that's what he was. The very thing that they brought identified what they thought he was. And I'll say that to us today. The things that we bring to him identify what our thoughts is about him. You understand what I mean? See, if, you're, if you believe it with all your heart, every word of that, you will identify it by giving all that you have to it. See? But if you believe it's a good place to associate with better people and around church and things like that, that's just about what you give. Just a few social hours with some of the congregation or something. But if you, if you really believe it with all your heart, then you give everything that's in you to it. See? And it identifies you that you truly believe the message, that you believe it to be the truth. So many people say, I can believe this much. I can believe so. The disciples, I believe the last time here I spoke on that. Believers make believers and unbelievers. Was that it? Did I speak on that here? See? And each person watch their category. See, it'll come to a place where they can take so much of it, can't take the rest. Now, how fitting these gifts was to Christ's journey on earth, a baby born here on earth, and these gifts that the wise man brought him fitted just in Exactly his commission from God and his journey on earth. Now the first thing, God, this was God. Jesus was God in the form of man. That's hard for people to swallow that even today. Yeah. That he was God. And he, that's what he was. He was nothing less than God. He was God manifested in flesh. He was the creator in his own creation. Uh, that he was a creator in his creation, by the creation, for the creation. He was a creator in his creation, by his creation, for his creation. All lines right back in God, the whole thing. Don't you see? Fullness of God. Amen. He was a creator in so much that he was God. And he was a being on earth, a being of time, which means that he must have had a beginning, and therefore he created himself a body to live in. Amen. God himself created a body for himself. See? That by this creation he might save the lost creation that he had created. Amen. There is nothing that man can annihilate. There isn't one thing. You can't do nothing to completely destroy anything. Amen. You might take a piece of paper and burn it up. You might burn a building down. You might burn a tree down. You didn't annihilate it. You, that heat in there, that fire that breaks up, that's only chemicals bursting. They're turning back to what they was at the beginning. Yes. They're not annihilated. If you burn up a piece of wood and the world says, if we live in eternity like God, and that chemicals out of that wood and that fire went back to its original beginnings and, its, and whatever it was, the breakings of the atoms and so forth. The, the world, say, would stand for millions of years. That could come right straight back again and be another tree just exactly like it was. Amen. You cannot annihilate anything because it is the spoken word of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, that gets me feeling religious now. See, what God says, it forever stands. Amen. 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 See, you cannot annihilate. We are part of this earth, and we can never be completely annihilated. No, sir. The sin, the soul will be annihilated. We realize that. But the, the body that we live in cannot be annihilated. Amen. See? Now, 
Therefore, God created himself a body. He was a creator and created his own creation that by this creation he might save them that were lost in his creation. That's you and I, creatures of time. His, his word exactly showed that he and his works proved that he was nothing less than the creator. Amen. He took a piece of bread and broke it and kept breaking that one piece of bread and fed 5,000 people out of it and took up seven basketfuls of pieces left over. And everybody there had a, a, a complete filling of bread. He took a fish and broke that fish off. Uh, we realized that he did create that fish in the beginning. Amen. He did create that bread in the beginning. But he took that fish and broke that fish off. A live fish had been and was then boiled or, or fried. And whenever he broke it off, whatever it was, bought or fried, it grew back the same minute that he broke it, another bought a fried fish. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. That showed that he was nothing less than Jehovah. Amen. Amen. He was a creator that could take his own creation and by his creation express who he was. Amen. Hallelujah. That's proved he was what he was. He was deity, so gold was becoming to him in the offering at his birth. He was deity made flesh. I might drop no strangers among us tonight, I suppose, so in this prayer meeting. But let me say something. Did Jesus, when he was sure, now this is for thinking, not for proud, probably, probably rather, notice just for thinking. Jesus said in St. John 14, 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater than this shall he do, for I go to my Father. Did you notice that? Notice. Now that was the Son of God promising to the believer that greater things that he did in these last days as the believer would do greater things than he did. St. John, 14th chapter, 12th verse. Is that right? Amen. Do you believe Jesus said it? Amen. Notice, when Jesus created bread, he took a piece of bread and created bread that had already been bread. When he created fish, he took a fish that was, or first created a fish, and put another fish out of it. Is that right? He took water which potentially would have become wine and made wine out of it. Is that right? Yeah. But we see him in our midst in this last day create things right out without anything standing there. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And create a squirrel where there is no squirrel. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Oh, he remains God. Hallelujah. He's just as much deity today as he was then and ever was or ever will be. Amen. He's still God and challenging hearts to believe it. Amen. Greater things than this you, without anything to hold and break off of. Speak it and it'll be so. Notice now, we find that he identified the works that he did, identified that he was deity. Show him that he was. Amen. For he said, if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. And could not the Christian say today, if I do not the works of my Savior, believe me not. See? As the Father sent me, so send I you. And if you did the works, creation works of the Father that sent him, then the, creation, the Christ, the Creator that sends us, does the works of Christ the Creator. See? As the Father sent me, so send I you. And if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. Then the Christian today has got to do the life that Christ did. Yes. Or we have a right to say, it's not so. Notice now, his works created him, or identified him, to be the creator. His works that he did 
crowned his life's testimony that he was the Creator. Amen. Amen. No way of getting away from it. Therefore, when they offered a gift of gold, they were perfectly in harmony with God Amen. with their gift. They gave him gold, which identified him as deity. Always the crown, the golden crown, the golden head of King Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, see, always deity is represented by gold. Now, frankincense, we want to get these quickly. Frankincense is the offering of service to Jehovah. Now, if you want to put these scriptures down, Leviticus 2.2 2 and Leviticus 16, 6 to 15, we find out that's the order of the priesthood to make an offering to Jehovah. When he made the offering, it had to be made and mixed with frankincense for sin offerings. They took different things and mixed it. For the meal offering, for the wave offering, frankincense was added because it was acceptable to Jehovah if it was anointed with frankincense, which means it is a service to Jehovah. Amen. God. And now we find out he's deity, and they brought him frankincense, was a type that he was a service to Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah's servant. Now, in St. Matthew 12, 15 to 21, we find out that he was Jehovah's servant. Behold my servant, who I well please. And he was, and I put my strength upon him. So his life was anointed with frankincense to Jehovah's servant. Amen. What a gift them wise man gave. See, it was something to, uh, the, the gift that they give was something to identify Jesus as Jehovah's servant. Now, if we could only do that to identify our lives, see, our lives to be identified as Jehovah's servant. That's what frankincense was for. That made him Jehovah's servant. Now, Myra, M-Y-R-R-H, was anointing of the dead. We find in St. John, the 19th chapter, the 39th verse, that going to the, the funeral service of Jesus when Mary and them went, they had taken this myrrh to uh, anoint him with because he must be the servant of of death for Jehovah. Amen. See, somebody had to die. That was a service that had to be done for God, and nobody was worthy to do it but God Himself. Amen. So bringing the mirror, mirror showing that with the deity and with the service that He also was anointed with mirror that this deity had to be put to death in order to save the imperfect one. Oh, what a great thing. The whole creation was lost. We just went through it in the seven seals. See? Yeah. The whole creation was lost. Everything was gone. It all belonged to Satan. He fell heir to it, and he still owns it. Yeah. He certainly does. That's the reason we're fighting and having all this trouble. He controls every kingdom. Satan does. Every government, every king, every kingdom, controlled by Satan, the whole world is controlled and run by Satan. That's really have the troubles that we have. Any Bible, a student or anything can tell you that Satan, well, the Bible itself says he did. That he controls the world. But Christ will fall heir to it, for now he is our Redeemer. And he come to redeem the whole creation and nothing can do it but God himself. Amen. Amen. That's the reason God does nothing outside of a man. He always works through a man because he had to use a man. A man is what he had to use to display his attribute of Savior. He had to make him in his image, make him something like him, and put him on free moral agency, and let him act any way he wanted to. He could take his choice. And he knew that man, by giving him this choice, would fall. So being that he had to do that, he turns back around and makes a man a partner to him, and does nothing except he does it through a man. The whole work of redemption come by a man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Death come by the first man. Life came by the second man. Amen. 
There you are. He does nothing because he had to use the man for that. Then he uses the man to redeem back again. So deity become Jehovah. Or Jehovah, be- he is deity and he become a, a child. He become in the form of sin that he might redeem the sinner. Yeah. See, there's the whole thing. Now look how, how beautiful those gifts fit into Jesus Christ. See, gold speaking of his deity. Now they wasn't heathens. They were inspired by God. They wasn't imagining something. That proves right there, even the Magi, that they did see the supernatural. Amen. Because their own gift that they offered identified and spoke well on their testimony. Amen. That they did see the supernatural light. Because why? It speaks perfectly. They brought gold, deity. They brought frankincense, service. And they brought murder for his death when he was a baby. Yeah. Amen. Showing that deity would be put to death in the flesh. Amen. Amen. That it might redeem fallen man. Uh, How can people turn like that? Amen. When you realize what are we doing here? Where did we come from? How what business we got being here? We wasn't put here just by chance. We were put here for a purpose. And we must serve that purpose, but still we're back on the basis of free moral agency where we can serve it or reject it, just like Adam did in the beginning. Now look at these little girls here, uh, brother, what, uh, be it, the little lady played the piano. And I, I was hearing them as they sang. We were talking about them on the road up here. There's a little family that's dedicated their whole life and everything to Christ. Look at that family, how orderly it is. Look at them little girls. They stand up here, they're the example of young womanhood, of teenage. And no matter, a few weeks ago I went out and like, uh, I don't know what the name of the place is down there in New York now. Well, they just got city blocks of beatniks. Now them girls down there with, with leg guitars on and, and uh, nothing but little, little, little bikini as they caught it over the top of that. And oh, just the combat, they do anything that's in their mind. No matter what it is, that's what, why they're beatniks. They can just do anything. If they want to lay down, don't get up. They just lay down and don't get up. If they want to go do a certain thing, they do it. If they don't, they don't. Just their mind, just traveling. And what does the unconverted mind come to? You have no right to do that. Because you're not your own. You're bought by deity, Jesus Christ. The Son of God that was made flesh. But see the conglomeration of sin. And you see a little young girls like that stand out. What to me is light in the time of darkness. Uh, it's a blackened light of the zigzag whip of God in the skies to show there can be light. Yeah, there can be righteousness yeah. in the midst of sin. Mary, a mother of Jesus, in the city of Nazareth, the meanest city there was in the land. But out of there, God chose a little lady to give birth to his son. Yeah, a incubator, a womb. A, head to, a baby had to be born by and he touched such a person to do it. Amen. God works through human beings to redeem human beings. He can take you, work through you to redeem humanity. If you completely dedicate everything you are, if you're a young woman, dedicate your morals. If you're a young man, dedicate your morals. Dedicate your mind. Dedicate your thinking. Dedicate your heart. Dedicate your soul. Dedicate all you are. Amen. Let Christ work through that. What a glorious thing. Got the rivers to cross. You've got the, the bridges to go over. You've got the, you've got the briar patches. You've got the thickets. You've got the woods. You've got the dark places. You've got the high hills. You've got the high climbs. What are you doing? Someday you'll have to stand and look back and see where you come from. And you're going to be judged by the course you take. But your your... Oh, your mind and your thoughts on that North Star, the center of God, and don't move from it. Stay right with it. It'll bring you straight, like it did the Magi, right straight to the Christ. All right. Anointed him with myrrh. We find out now in John 12, uh, 1 and 7, that's just exactly what he done. He was the perfect servant of God and had him anointed with all of his divine gifts. He was anointed with all God's gift because he was God. He was God 
See, they brought him gifts. Now we'll be, I wish uh, the people here always, uh, most of them, you know, send you something. Now it comes back to sending back. I couldn't do it. See, it's the world over. I just couldn't do it. And I appreciate a little, <clears throat> little things and things that people do to express herself and their thankfulness and so forth. Now this is what these rich men do. These men are magi. They bought gold, pure gold. They brought frankincense, the best they could find. They brought myrrh, the best they could find. We realize over here in St. John 12, we find out that this woman, if we had time to read it, but I don't want to keep you too long, see, because I know tomorrow's Monday, you know, somebody had to work. Look, they brought this, this woman, brought this myrrh, that anointed, costly, something to take the smell of death away. And she broke this alabaster box and poured it up on the head of Jesus. And Judas said, why, well, this ought to have been given to the poor. Said not that he had respect for the poor, but he was a thief to begin with. He carried the money. And said this ought to have been sold instead of part of it. And Jesus said, let her alone. For she did this, she anointed him unto his burial. Amen. See, this woman, so grateful that her sins were forgiven, until she spent all of her money she had and took an alabaster box and broke it and poured the oil and uh, it just ordered the room with fine smell of this myrrh that she had anointed him for his death. Now see, she did the service not knowing what she was doing. But she was so grateful to God. And if you're so grateful for Christmas, it's not to say, I, I give Joneses a gift, they give me one back, I'll see what I got in the morning. <laughs> Won't you open up your heart and see what's in there? Find out what you got in here. Except if you find it empty with just negative creeds and, and, and tears of the world. Why not ask Christ to fill it tonight? Tonight. So that you can get the real meaning of Christmas. It's Christ in you. God dwelling in the human heart. That's what the real Christmas means. But you see, today we become so negative. It's a devil getting us through that. It's painted candy sticks in it, and a reindeer and, and a whiskered man that flies through the air like an airplane and visits the whole world and every home with a little bundle of toys on his back and visits every child. And it's, it's just a lie. It's just right out of line. See? Now, see, but why? the devil did that so he could twist the minds of the people. The commercial world got into it, and they... Well, they make enough through Christmas time until they can retire the rest of the year almost. I talked to a merchant the other day. He said, you give me these two weeks, and if I didn't have to keep my band here, I said, I'd wait till next Christmas. I could go fishing or whatever I want to do till next Christmas. He said, but I'll keep the boys going. He said, just keep them here just enough to keep my business open, and it keeps, it keeps my hands paid off and things. Uh, I don't think nothing until Christmas time comes on. You see, it's become a great commercial thing when it ought to be a worship worship. Now, God has so anointed Jesus with the fullness of himself to, that he was God's gift to the world. That the wise men are clearly identified that their offering, their gift to him showed that in their heart they knew who he was and what he was going to do for them. So no wonder the first thing they did they fell down perfectly in order and worshipped him. Before they could even understand it, they fell down and worshipped him and then presented their gifts. That's the way to have real Christmas. Worship him, then present your gift. Presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. But you know what? After the wise man did that, the father and mother of Christ, the foster father, of course, and also a mother, because God was both his father and mother. But we find out that they accepted these gifts from these wise men. No wonder they were called wise men. They were wise. They were really had wisdom. If man today would just be that wise, just as wise, it takes a wise man to come to Christ. A man that turns away from him is an unwise man. But it takes a wise man to come to Christ. Now notice, and after then, the wise man identifying 
him what he would be, and we find through the scripture that's exactly what he was, deity in service or death. What for? Deity in service to God or death. Jesus was deity in service or death to redeem the world. But what did the world do to it? They refused it. They rejected it. Why? Some of them, a big part of them, did that because this. Because he did die. They said he couldn't be deity enough. The man, the body was not deity, but deity was in the body. Amen. This body has to perish. The very Christ that's in you is the only thing that can raise you up. That's deity. God in you. Now notice. Now, the same as now, they reject identified deity. Do you get it? They will certainly put their name on a church book and say, I'll try to live with this creed. They'll take an oath by this. But when it comes to accepting deity and expressing back the same kind of a gift like they did, that you are identified by your gift. That you give your entire being to it. To identify deity. Then you identify yourself with the deity. By giving all you are, what you are, to deity himself. Now Christ in this day that we now live in is still identifying himself deity among the people. He's still deity because he is the Word. And when we see the Word living itself, then we know that man can't do that. It's deity, the Word, being made manifest by man. And Jesus said himself, the Son can do nothing in himself. I can't do nothing. I'm a man, Jesus said. But my Father that dwelleth in me, he showeth thee all things that himself doeth. Hey, man, there you are. What is it? Deity being identified in man. Amen. Now, the same thing is today. That deity, the promise word for this day, can identify itself in you. Hey, Amen. Then give your whole to it. Show that you believe in it. Give it deity, believe it, service. Be ready to die out to yourself in your own thoughts. But today, it's rejected as it was then. Notice, God guided the Magi with them gifts. For practically two years, they followed that stock. See, and that shows it couldn't be one of the natural things that happened. See? Because if the stars crossing their orbit would have crossed, it would show there was something different because unless those Magi saw it a long time before it happened and know they had to cross that way, then the path they were coming in, and they crossed just at Bethlehem at that time, started from up there beforehand knowing that these heavenly bodies were moving that way. Now, God guided the Magi because they had the right gifts. God guided these wise men because they had the right identified gift to identify his son. Oh my. Do you get it? Wise man today. Wise in the name of the Lord. Not with some fictitious something, but with the gift that God promised for this day. And God will guide you to identify that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. There you are. Wise man. God guided those gifts because they were the gifts to identify him. Wise man today who can look away from church entity and all the things of the world to the living word of God. And God will identify his son by his word because that's what he is. I and my Father are one. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, 
And the same word today, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And a wise man follows that because that's what God takes care of to identify himself by. Amen. 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 A gift. A real identified gift of God. God brings up to you everything like that to identify himself by. Amen. And that's how Christ was identified by gold. Myrrh and frankincense by damn man foreshadowing and showing in type what his life was to be. See? Deity manifested for service to die that he might redeem the nation because he was to save his people from their sins. Not save the world. Save his people from Amen. their sins. The Bible says here, for in, in his name will the Gentiles trust. Amen. The Gentiles will trust in his name. Amen. Amen. In other words, the bride, the called out of the Gentiles, will be trusting in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In his name shall the Gentiles trust. Now, God guided them. For they were, the gifts that they were giving were fitting to the top. Notice. God said God has, he, he divided his word at the beginning in Genesis. I can take Genesis and show you every age in the Bible down to this age here. All the cults and things we had there, I can show you exactly where it was in Genesis. See, God gave His Word so much here, so much here, so much here for each age. And then He sent a prophet down, anointed, to make that Word come to pass and support the other that was coming. See, yeah. like the Messiah always supported every prophet in his own life, his own being, the word that was given for that day, he'd come and fulfill that written word and foretold of what the other one was going to be. And every one of them spoke of him. Amen. Because he was the fullness. He was the head of the prophets. He was the word of God. He was the prophet. Amen. Amen. There he is. Notice how wonderful what he was. Each one of those prophets. Then when he comes, he was the fullness of all the prophets manifested. Because they were the word of the Lord. And he said himself, if you call those gods whom the word of God come to, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the Son of God? Even those in that age was identified as gods. God called them himself gods. What were they? They were manifestations of his word. And here was he, the fullness of the word. Deity in body. Deity manifested in the flesh. What? For these gifts that these men brought, they couldn't have brought that to a prophet. Wouldn't have been right. See? Them gifts couldn't have went to Elijah. They couldn't have went to Moses. They had to come to him. And then those gifts were strictly meant for that day and was to identify who he was by these gifts, then here come God along and protected him and kept him two years down there until he found the perfect life. How fitting. Same thing today. We got people. This is loyal, nice people, genuine people. But you see, in that there's going to be something come forth that God's always done to identify this day. This is the day when these things are spoken to happen. There won't be many, just the very, very few that'll be saved. The Bible said so. There'll be just a handful. Jesus said himself, as it was in the days of Noah, wherein eight souls were saved. Eight souls. Out of a, a generation like into this. As it was the days of Noah. What was it? Great, a cultured people. Great workers, great builders, great everything that they had. Maybe a civilization just like it. Great things that they had, as it were in the days of Noah. So will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. See? And God had Noah to identify his promised word. It was very fitting. The ark was fitting to the word of God that he spoke and he would destroy man. But he saved what he could. Now these wise men bringing their gifts identified, their gifts identified what it was, and that's the reason God protected those gifts through every move that they made, He protected it until they arrived with those gifts. 
because they were fitting for the time. Amen. Does my church understand that? Amen. Amen. That's what's going on now. Amen. I hope it ain't over your head. I have to speak it in parable almost, you see. But do you see, it's the thing that's happening is fitting for this day. Amen. Lady of fear. It's the fitting time. That's the reason God has protected you. He brought it right through to identify himself. Gifts. Amen. Though it cost a death and put a stomach block in their way. It's a fitting time. That's right. Fitting for the day. Amen. That's the reason God has protected the way he has. He will protect it until his purpose is served. Amen. Amen. Oh, I read a story. Come to my mind not long ago of something on that order. It was in a great city here in this nation and New York. And it was on Christmas Eve. And there was a poor family, a little daddy, he had TB. And, he was, and his wife had TB. They'd been underprivileged. And he, he uh, kind of, he, he's weakly, and so nobody would hire him. He had no education. And he, he, people didn't want him. He just, as an outcast, he'd become a tramp. Just you know what a tramp is. Just go by and, and pick up something, paddle it, and get what they can, what little uh, royalty they make on it to try to live by. Just a, like a peddler or something on the street. Go buy some pins and needles and thimbles and whatever they can and, and take it and, and maybe buy for a penny a pack and sell them for a nickel and make four cents on the pack. And maybe in a run of a day's death, that's a great commission, but just think all he'd sell in a day. Maybe make 20, 30 cents a day. And he had a family. And uh, the little wife, being weakly, she, she died. And it was coming Christmas time, and the little girl, she had developed from malnutrition, not having the right food and things. Uh, she took TB also. And she was a little fellow, about eight, nine years old, ten, and she had never had a doll for Christmas. And that's what she wanted for a gift, was a doll. And uh, the father, not able to give her medical attention and so forth, and he, he seen the little girl was going fast, and he tried his best to, 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 to get enough money together to get her a doll for Christmas. If he could just get enough to buy her, her a little doll. And so the uh, Christmas time was coming on, the bad weather set in, the little girl developed some kind of pneumonia, and, and she died just a few weeks before Christmas. And the father, of course, broken hearted, went to his little tin can and got the money out and he thought of his little girl and she wanted a doll, like a little girl. See, it's a little mother coming on. You notice how a little girl, she goes to the doll because she's, that's her nature. She's a, she's a coming mother. She will be mother someday she lives and everything. Nor in nature. That's why the little girl likes a little doll. She wants to take care of it because after all, she, she's a little, uh, potentially a, a, a little mother. And she wanted a little doll and she never had one. And Daddy had saved everything he could to, to get her a little doll. And so she died. And the father kind of had a, a lapse of mind. His wife had been taking his little girl and his mind kind of got to a place that he still... He, He'd go to bed every night and talk to this little girl, though she was been buried. But he thought he was, he was talking to her and tell her, Now, honey, it won't be long. And Daddy's going to get you this dolly for Christmas. And, and Daddy's promised you the dolly, and I, I'm, I'm going to get it. But I mean, Christmas arrived. And, of course, you know how it is. The rich had their, their big parties and uh, candles burning and the great high masses in the churches and talking about Jesus and, and so forth. The churches were going through all kind of uh, routines of mass and singing and carols and everything. <coughs> Little did they know what was going on back in the alley behind all this. This uh, little fellow back there and he got beside himself. He wanted that little girl to have that doll so bad because she had begged so for this little doll. So he went out and he bought her a little rag doll. 
a little uh, little thing, probably about thirty cents, a little dirty something you bought down on the side of the street. And it was a real cold night. The, the, the blizzard winds are blowing, snow falling hard there in New York, right on the coast, and the streets filling up, and the people in their great uh, big limousine cars and drunken parties out drinking the celebration of the birth of Christ and of these things that we speak of tonight trying to think that that's the right way to do it just to drink off their old sorrows and things and that's, that's the way to do it all of them stand the story of the day and a woman talk about what two girls met and won't know what they got for their daddy and one of them said well he, she got him a carton of certain kind of cigarettes and the other said she got him a fifth of whiskey and a, and a, and a deck of car now if that ain't Give them a memorial gift for the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the way it goes. You see, it's just a big bunch of tinsel. It hasn't got Christmas in it at all. And so we find out this little man, he wandered along. And he know in his heart his little girl was gone, but he went and bought the doll anyhow. And he thought, I'll just start walking. I'll find her somewhere. She'll be along the street here and I'll find her. And he started walking. He, he couldn't fool himself. She wasn't back there in the little shanty and in the little ragged, dirty bed, but uh, she was there. So he he knew, he thought he'd find her on the street. He said, I'll just keep walking. And he was going down through the alleys while they were singing their carols and going on, and going down the alley, packing this little dirty doll, holding it in his coat up to his heart, thinking of his little girl. And finally, a policeman happened to see him and the policeman had a few drinks himself and he ran into the alley and grabbed the old man and turned him around he said what are you doing I ain't here he said I'm taking this little doll sir to my little girl he said well, where do you live and he told him where he lives he said well you're going away from that place you're drunk go back the other way he said sir I'm not drunk I promised my little girl I'd, I'd get her a gift for Christmas. And said, an appropriate gift for a little girl is a little doll. And he said, let me see it. So he showed him a little dirty light rag doll. And he's holding it in his, uh, next to his bosom, holding a little doll. Is he? So the policeman, half drunk himself, uh, shoved him on and started down. The old man went down the alley, snow falling fast. And, well, the midnight parties broke up. The next morning, the snow had let up. The sun had come out. So they was all the people from their great gaiety parties just ice sacks on their heads from too much drinking and celebration of the, the birth of Christ. And, and many of them were forced and carrying off from all the going on. But way down in the alley, they found the old man. And when he turned him over, he had the little dog next to his heart. I suppose he took his gift to her. He found her in a land, land not here. Right. He, he, he took the gift. It was an appropriate gift. Hey, God, merciful. Yet it cost him his death. There's no other way in the world he could have given her the gift. She was barren. Hey, but the only way he could do it would be go like that. Amen. Hey, little doll didn't mean too much I guess a little dirty faced doll but it, what did he do it it fulfilled a promise he had made amen no matter what the people thought about it his dirty hand and a little dirty doll but it, it fulfilled a promise to his little girl amen sometimes they look upon the gospel the same thing they didn't want it when God brought it but it fulfilled a promise amen that he would give his son you know what? They left him to die too, just like a tramp on the street. Uh, exactly right. They left him to die like a tramp on the street. And today, they treat him like a tramp on the street. Uh, but he fulfilled what he was supposed to do. He was the gift that God promised to the world. Tonight, let me take him as my Savior to my heart. Let me walk in the face of my death or whatever it is like that. Amen. I promise my life to him. Amen. I want to take it to him. No matter why I have to go, if I have to go through death and have to be shot, no matter what takes place, I have to be laughed at, called crazy, everything else communicate from the rest of the Christian churches and so forth. 
Uh, it's a gift of God that I hold in my heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to take it to you. Let's bow our heads just a minute. Uh, appropriate gifts I speak on. It was appropriate gift because she, the little girl, she was a, a little girl to be, the mother would have been. An appropriate gift was a little doll. An appropriate gift that God, the Creator, could give to His creation would be a Savior to save it from the condition it was in. I wonder tonight, as we are approaching Christmas now, and I suppose it would be the last message we hear between now and Christmas, unless we get the radio messages somewhere. I wonder tonight if we've accepted the gift that God promised us. Eternal life through believing on Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit. If you haven't, you'd like to accept God's real, true Christmas gift. Would you raise your hand and say, Brother Bram, I, I don't know. I've, I've sometimes believed it and I've watched what things I do and I'm kind of a little bit in doubt. Don't, don't doubt it anymore, <laughs> friends. It, it, it's too late to go to doubt now. Let's be real sure of it. Say, pray for me, Brother Branham, and I want to, God's gift to the world with Jesus Christ. I, I, I want this to be a real Christmas. I accept the Holy Spirit in my heart that could cradle me through all the storms of life that someday... I can come in His presence with this gift of eternal life. He'll accept me up on those bases. That's the only way He'll do it. All right, if you got the right gift tonight, the right kind of an attitude, God, I'll follow you wherever you go. Whatever you say, do, I'll do it. Whatever your word says to me, do it, I'll do it. Yes, sir, I don't care what everybody else says. I'm going to do it because I want your gift. It's life, and Christ is the word. If you can't believe all the words and say, well, I don't know. I, I believe it, this, I believe that, but I just can't go this, I can't go that. You're like the 70 that went away. They can't accept all the Word and receive Christ and the fullness of His deity and His service and ready to die as He did for you. Then would you just put up your hand with your head down and say, pray for me. God bless you and God bless you. 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 You have signs and see your hands. Lord bless you. Sure. This little gift of Christ that God sent to the world and identified it by the Magi's identified it his own life identified it his death identified it his resurrection identified it your accepting identified it and he identifies himself with you that you are his and he is yours if you're not really see the reaction of the spirit of God working in you in this Christmas season may it come to you now Heavenly Father, as we stagger like the tramp on the street, nobody had any use for us. The world went right on in their foolish celebration. So are they tonight, Lord, but sometimes we feel like that tramp. <laughs> but we've accepted a gift. Yeah. So we pray, Father, that you make us a gift of a life to this dying world. Many here have raised their hands that they want the gift of God, that it, he had to himself give his only begotten son, came down, become a man. He stooped so low that he didn't even, he comes so low and so humble that he, he didn't even have a bed to be born in. A, a, a cow had to, uh, or a horse or something had to give its mane to step aside an animal human being that got in so a condition there was he, he come down in, in a manger a little old cave stable on the side of the hill there in Bethlehem where Harlot's son had founded the little city many years before and now, Lord, we find out that one night, a cold night, it was said to him, Rabbi, we want to go home with you tonight. And he said, well, now the birds, they have nests, and, and the foxes have been, but I, I don't have a, even a place to lay my head. And that's the way they let him die, like the tramp on the street. Heavenly Father, can the, the Christian, can the people today see that? Now that is a great gift. And many here tonight, more than a dozen, I guess, raised their hands that they wanted to receive the Holy Spirit. 
Maybe they're just like the wise men. Maybe none of the rest of the congregation will even see what goes on. And this star, this mystic light, passed over the observatories for two years where people even kept time then. Before watches, they kept time by the stars. Nobody, no historian wrote of it. No one, no nothing about it. And yet it was there. These wise men with the appropriate gift was guided right to, to it. May that same light come into every heart here tonight that's sitting present. There may not be no emotion. It may not be this, that. And maybe no one else will know it. It's like the wise men. But may something so be settled in these men, women, boys, and girls' hearts tonight that that gift of God will anoint their life. That from this night on, they'll be changed. They won't be no more like they used to be. They'll be a, a changed preacher from now on. May they, like the wise man, turn aside and not go back to the fashions of the world, Herod, the king's palace, but being warned of God, they turned aside. Grant it, Lord, tonight I pray that every wise man, boy or girl in here tonight, man or woman, that's wise enough to turn aside from the things of the world tonight, don't go back no more after this day, after this this passing of this day and night. No more will they go back to the things of the world. But maybe they'd be wise in this little mystic voice that calls them to raise their hand and say, Yes, I want God's gift. May that same thing that calls them to raise their hand identify them tonight with His death, burial, and resurrection by giving them the Holy Spirit. May they turn aside. May these women here tonight, Lord, it's had such a hard time to keep them coping with the world, let their hair grow and dress ladylike and take off this makeup and stuff that artificially shows. It, it kind of identifies them that they're not healthy. They're, they're, there's something wrong. And may tonight this little mystic light, Lord, that calls them to raise their hands, may they say, Lord, I'm turning aside from the things of the world tonight. These men that hasn't had the, the, the real something that would talk to their wives and cause them to turn aside and the things that they do may we all together Lord just turn aside tonight being warned of God by the strange little message of the, the light of God that strikes upon our hearts may we turn aside tonight and live for you the rest of our days go, go home with you by another way than what we have been traveling grant it Lord make us better Christians every Christian here tonight Father that's accepted you and believes on Him. And they've tried to live a Christian life, but tonight may they turn aside. May they receive that gift. Oh God, it's, it's, a, it's a despised way. Women will be called old-fashioned. They'll be called everything. Man will be called fanatics. But we're, we're ready, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, turn us aside right now. Turn me aside, Lord. I, I don't want to even go uh, any way that would lead me away from you, Lord. I want to go just the way you had me to go. Oh, no. I want the gift of my heart to be so perfect that it'll identify you, Lord, on earth. That you're not dead, you're living. You're the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Mm-hmm. The dead is covered all over with flies and blowflies creating germs and and more blowflies. Like the man takes his first drink, smokes his first cigarette, tells his first lie. Goes out on his wife the first time, or the wife that goes out on the husband or does the things that's wrong. Just like a blowfly struck them, and they, they accumulate by the glove and the blows and filth because it's on a dead soul on the inside. Evil spirits glove, and one evil spirit causes them to do something else, and another comes causes them to do something else because they did this. God made it turn aside and come to life. May they rise and the angels of God come down with the gifts of eternal life, Lord, and go from victory unto victory. Grant it, Father. We turn aside tonight from the things of the world and the cares of the world. Warned of God that the time is at hand. Jesus is coming back to the earth. And may the great Holy Spirit give us tonight that eternal life that we're looking for. Grant it, Lord. We're, we're just pray that you'll grant these blessings to us. As we ask them in Jesus Christ's name, that are in His power. Wise men long ago came to that, followed that light. To, they found the perfect light. 
And may the little light tonight that made you put up your hands, or maybe you didn't even instruct you, but you never even raised your hand. May that light guide you right on to that perfect light. Let's just all stand for a little consecration service. Let's make our little heart here tonight a dwelling place for Christ. Remember tonight my odd little story of a tramp. Tonight, really, Jesus Christ is that tramp on the street. Right? He, he was a tramp on the street. Oh, yeah, we say we serve him, sure. All the tinsel and glamour, that's not him. That's not him. He had to die to bring you this gift. Not a doll, but life. He had to die in order to do it to get to you. Only way he could get to you. He couldn't just come here and be a perfect man like he was and get to you. He couldn't do it that way. He had to die to do it, to get, get the gift of God to you. Like the, the tramp had to die to get the little doll to his girl. Christ had to die to get God to you. We want to accept it tonight. I believe with our heads bowed. And let's just uh, raise our hands to God and consecrate our lives anew right here tonight. Oh, gracious God, we, we want your gift. I, I'm here as this Christmas season, Lord, as I realize and look upon the earth and see the tinsel and the glamour of the day. I, I can just see you out yonder, as the Bible said, this lady of sin age, you're outside your church, you're rejected, a fugitive to your own church, and to your own people, you're, you're, you're rejected, a, a fugitive being something that's refused, and you're refused in your own church, you're refused amongst your people, they don't want you, Lord, and they've left you like the tramp on the street. God... You, you, you went on dying anyhow that you might bring the gift of God to us. And we humbly accept it, Lord. I pray that you just fill our hearts and lives and turn us aside from this night on. Yeah. And may we be holy yours as we consecrate ourselves to you. Receive me, Lord. Many of the mistakes of life that I've made. And dear God, as I, as I stand here over this sacred spot where the gospel has been preached and where we've seen you here even in a, a great light that shined upon us and we're so grateful for this Lord I, I consecrate myself to this Christmas not as, as the world would do or to, or to turn new pages Lord I, I just want to accept your son I, I want to accept your gift Lord I want you to accept the gift of eternal life through Christ and I truly Lord accept the gift of Christ to me to try to win others to him God, we each one make the little housewife so sweet and humble that she'll be able to lead others to you. The gift that you give her, that finished little ladylike, may she be so ladylike to the neighbors or a seer and, and want to be like her. Make the man, the shop worker, whoever he is, Lord, make him a humble life like Christ that others might see. We don't know where are those people are standing out there, Father. But we never want to leave the grand old highway, but we'll lean backwards, lean forward, reach way out anywhere to get a soul. But that within our reach, Lord, we pray, and give us the, the, the life that would cause people to want to live like that as we consecrate ourselves to you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you bow your heads again, I want to wish each and one of you a very Merry Christmas. May the great Christmas present, the first one and the only and the original and the only one there is, Jesus Christ, be afresh in your heart tonight. May the Holy Spirit come to you and bring you ministering gifts and things from God, that you a gift that you might live a better life. That's what I want. I would rather have the life of Christ in me to live sweet and victorious than I would all the gifts of healing, the gifts of prophecies, all them other gifts, just give me Jesus. Let me live the life. The life is what I want to live. I want to live so others will know. That's my, that's my desire at Christmas. And I pray that's your desire, and I pray that God will give us His desire. Now, let's have a word from the pastor. And God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you.